I feel like I get corona off a party. Um, I got corona the correct way. Motherfuckers just nah, get corona from opening the door. Nah, I can get it from the door. <laughs> Come on, man. Like, I'm trying to have fun. I'm trying to have fun.
So yeah, talk a little bit about that. I remember you had helped start PMO from yeah. Me, if I'm wrong. So yeah, so what happened was PMO was my first artist management company. I did that with Kobe Davis, my brother. Uh, I met him. And, actually, I met him and Price at the same time because when I did. I DJ Price Fix 16 in high school, and I DJ Kobe. First it was Kobe Fix 16, and then it was Price Fix 16. That's how we all kind of collab. And man, and we just from the city, the politics. Yeah, I was that young man. Man, but that's I well. After, after I DJ, they both of their parties, bro. It was like my career. Cause it's like, like, look, when I came to London and I was DJ, and he was like, you know, Kid Cam. Yeah. Like, you, fuck, you, you fuck with his party? He was like, okay, we go kind of DJ you. It was like, all right, fuck bro, it. And it's crazy, like even with that, like I'm, I'm kind of like a bridge because like. Once I tapped in with Price and Kobe New Play, it was in Jack and Jill. You know, Jack and Jill. Like, see, so that that part of the city, that's that's the like cool money vibing city. Yeah. And then I'm still in the hood, like on the west side. So like my part, my parties have been so big because I was on two sides of Atlanta. So I had people that's in the city still a little bit, and I had Jack and Jill, and they would be just this big mosh by muscle pot. And that's even with me just being at Kip, like Kip was a charter school, so we had people from all over APS. So every Atlanta public school was at Kip inside of Kip. So my reach over the city just went kind of crazy and that kind of like kind of part of that. But back to get to the question, with, with Price, actually when I was with Price originally, he was signed to RCA in a group, History in the Making. So when that first started, I was gonna be I was gonna be their tour DJ. But I, didn't want to, I, I couldn't go on tour with them because I was you know, I was still in band, marching band, so, you know, stuff like that. But ironically, we, we ended up linking up back at Howard. Um, he got out his deal with RCA, he became independent. So that's when we I started, me and Kobe started a uh, management company with him, you know, just to help the system, stuff like that. And then um, me and Kobe, we didn't fall, we didn't fall out of nothing. Like we just both split terms with the management company because I knew I didn't want to necessarily do management all my life. Also, because it's, it's gonna get to a point when a manager you're a glorified babysitter sometimes, and then and then wouldn't even just like babysitting the price. I, I wouldn't even babysit the price. I'm saying in general, like any man, like manager period, any problem an artists have is your problem. You know what I'm saying? And I just feel like I wasn't, I'm not willing to goddamn roll the dice. With every artist manager, because at the end of the day, the music industry is literally just a dollars. Dollars. It's you a really, business. It's a business, and you gambling, bro. Like you, you just hoping the time and money you put into this person is the million dollar lottery ticket, and now y'all both can eat. You know what I'm saying? So, I just knew that was a, it's a fight that I wouldn't have now to tie grab the bag. So yeah, I will also get back in um, artist management once I get a bag. Where I can say, you know what? Okay, here hundred thousand dollars. I can sign this artist. I can pitch you here, here, here for connections I built. So that's why I kind of like backtracked on that. But in the reverse, I created a publishing company, which is a little, little more hands-on with that. So it's like, it's not necessarily I need, with music publishing, you're working with songwriters and producers, right? Sure. So now, in that space, you're working on crap. That means like either you're a producer who can make industry-level beats, or you're a songwriter who can make a song for Beyonce, freaking get, uh, rights to anybody. That's a different That's a different grind, you know what I'm saying? Like, you don't need 100,000 or a million followers on Instagram, man. You don't need that. You just need to have talent. So. And that's kind of why I kind of transition to that space because I'm, I'm around talent every day. When I'm, when I'm in fine arts at Howard, it's singers, it's people who, who produce, who play instruments. Those are people who, who, who publish it comes looking at it like, I need a songwriter. And I, I, I started running as a songwriter. So that was kind of my new little side project I started getting through. And you know, it's, it's working. Right, going. It's going pretty good. I had a, I had a, my, I had a virtual, see a lot, of, also too, the pandemic. Looks up everything, but it, it, it slowed the music business down, <laughs> slowed everything up. But what happened was recently I had a virtual panel with um, D Hill. You know, he got the song with Drake and Future and all that. I had uh, Buddha Blessings beat. I had Nick the Mogul, who's Take Keith's manager. He's with Dramatize so Take Keith. All of the whole Memphis thing that's him. We had um, Steve O, and then we had uh, who else? We had oh, my, my, my uh, mentor uh, Dre. He he works with Digital Nas uh, at um, Digital Nas, and oh, and Destiny Dior too. That's what Nick worked with as well. So I had them on a panel together. That was pretty lit. I didn't know what was gonna happen. I literally was like, "Fuck it, COVID is here, but I'm gonna do something virtual." I just really just start DMing folks. Oh, and Aunt Chamberlain, that's another producer. Sure. I literally just DM them like, "Hey, I'm trying to get this Zoom panel for my college kids." With you know, you, as long as you say you go, you in college, bro. Folks are like, "Hell yeah, I'm with you." You say you drop Howard, it that, it that bro. I'm telling you, you drop Howard, Morehouse, any of that, bro. And, and just say I go there. I'm trying to do these students. Boom, it's like that. So a lot of folks don't know that. DM them folks. Had a little panel discussion and I parted with, I don't know if you know Shia the Great. China, 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 she, she oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So she, um, yeah, so I worked in with her. Yeah, I talked in with her, bro. She and she, she she the one that brought in Buddha and all that. Yeah, no, okay, now I, I was on the call. Yeah, bro. Yeah, bro so I'm about she, to in. So we, we am learning. I'm, I'm just, me just networking, bro. Like, I look, when I met, I don't even know how I met China. I can't remember how we met, but once we, we connected, we said, this is what we're doing. We both tapped in and we made it, we made it happen. So that's just on the publishing, we just publishing side. And then, 
So how are you looking to grow things there? You feel me? Are you signing more songwriters? Or not necessarily signing them, but you know, anybody um, watching, you know, and they want to be a part of it, or you feel me? they see themselves. So I feel, so right now, currently, I am looking for songwriters and producers, and actually, what we're putting together is a songwriting camp. Okay. So this this is how I was going. This is how I was going to kind of like do it without going too crazy. Was literally have you know how Dreamville had their whole songwriting camp a week, and yeah. they had every artist slide pull up. Bro, we can do the same exact thing. That, and, that, and that's actually the secret I learned when I was at the uh, Grammy, U, Grammy U Academy, like an event. I asked, asked the president, like, hey, I'm working at the publishing company, what should I do? And Buddy was ignoring me. He was like, you know, was throwing me off. Like, you know, he said, bro, I'm going to give you one nugget. Just make a songwriter camp, bro. Put together a songwriter camp and get some talent in. If you can get some talent in the room, bro, you get one person out of 10, 15, 20 people you write. One of the person in there can write a song that yeah. can be a hit. So he gave me that nugget and I ran with it. And that's that's what I'm currently trying to do right now. COVID kind of messed it up. I had something like Doppler and Patchwork, but you know now it's like mandates. We can only have this many people in the studio. Sure. This that. So, but that's gonna be the next my next big thing on that side of the spectrum. So. Sure. So I know you touched up um, a little bit, like you said, your life in Atlanta. Um, you obviously you think you've been here your whole life. You're proud ATL. Yeah, I'm yep, <laughs> What's uh you feel me? What's what's it like now as far as like culture wise? You feel me? Black Lives Matter. Um, you know how do you feel as a as a regular citizen? So, that's, that's kind of a loaded question, but yeah, it's okay, cool. It's, no, it's down, cool. No, we can break it down. No, I'm with it. So, I, I can kind of get my views on it. I don't know if, so in high school, when I'm still, that's when um, the Ferguson shooting happened. Remember, remember that's when, we, we all so, that, so that's when the protests started happening across the country. Like, you know, all over the country, people protested. And, but when they came to Atlanta, I was like, you know, Atlanta is, our political climate is different than everybody else. Like, we're a black city. We have, you know, black mayors. Black police officers, black this, black, black everything. So when initially when when um, they were happening, I was like, you know, like these people grew up in our backyard. Like it, my neighborhood, like the cops in my neighborhood, I know them. Like they know my grandma, they know my house. You know what I'm saying? Like that. So I don't think that's the relationship to other cities. So so when if anytime anything crazy would happen downtown, like cops are usually chilling. You know what I'm saying? Like they not like I've been, I kid you not, I've been pulled over sometimes. Drunk as hell, riding down Mosley High, like we're getting pulled over, hot boxing, white cop or black cop, pull up on us, bro, and let us go. Tail light out, a mirror miss, like, I, I, bro, I can, bro, I can call my homies right now. Like I, the police in Atlanta really don't be tripping that hard. So I was in space, like, especially if you're in the city. So me, when I was sitting somewhere, I'm like, bro, like, why are we all about to fight these folks? These are bad. Y'all, you take a, you take a, the uniform, up, bro. This a black man. You know what I'm saying, like. So that that was that whole. That's why I was on the fence when a lot of stuff was happening in high school. And I ain't even talking about what recently just happened. So now recently it came back up. So now I'm sitting here like four years later. Yeah, four years. I'm like, oh shit, this is getting a little wow. And at the same time, I was I was learning even with my body. And so I'm like, okay, I I see why people are not you know, fucking with cops. I see why we have our mayor. You know what I'm saying? Everything she kind of says, it kind of goes and supporting the cops and not her citizens. Like say, even when she trying to take the kids. Of the street selling water. Yeah. Them kids been selling water in the streets literally since I was in, I was in Atlanta. You know what I'm saying? Like, I've been here for sure. Literally, bro. So it's like, but when she drive home from the capital and come down the Cascade where we on right now, when she come down to her and make this left to, to go to Nifty Lakes, she she's been seeing no kids. So how, so how can you say take the kids off this corner, but I pay money in their pockets? They on the corner because they don't have money. This is they hustle. Which one of them like weed and fucking pills? You know what I'm saying? Like, so I feel like a lot of times. It, and this is another thing. A lot of times, the politics in Atlanta and Twitter, they're they're not we in the city. Like y'all, people be yelling on Twitter and on Instagram. But y'all, I I live this. I'm here. I don't have to. I don't have to live in my phone to know what the fuck is going on in my own community. You know what I'm saying? So that's why I was. That's why I was getting frustrated because like the people that was out there doing all that hoopla. I'm like, bro, y'all don't even know what's really going on in our hood or even care. And that's why I was even mad, at Keisha. I'm like, you also don't care about your own community either because you you're not thinking about pinning them first. And that goes outside of politics. That goes in, in with schools. When teachers like to punish kids, put the kids first. People be mad, you know, mad at Chick Fil A, but one thing about Chick Fil A got good ass customer service and shit. Like, take that. It's all about customer experience, bro. How are you treating your damn citizens? Thing. That's my whole thing. But the people at the end of the day, it should be just supporting people in that space. But you know, that's a long tangent. But yeah, that's what I'm gonna do. I got yeah, it. No, we need that shit. Dude. Yeah. Um. So damn. I. You feel me? You obviously have heavily, heavily opinion. Opinion. Heavily, <laughs> yeah. 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 On that. Um. As you should be, as a black man, you feel me, obviously concerned. Got to, Do you feel, you feel me, you might have any, I don't want to say careers or politics, because it's not really a career, oh, but. For sure. I, personally, I, I want to be a counselor. Okay. So, sure. I've learned 
even just this watching and being around, and so even like uh, Andrew Dickerson, like he he went to Georgia, he went to Georgia Tech. He's he's over my district, and we have uh, Mary Overstreet is over this district as well. Like I'm just now I'm learning about politics. I'm getting you know, on like what policies they're pushing. Like right now, you know they they were trying to start. But they're mad because we want to be fun the police, right? Yeah. So the latest uh, Mary Overstreet who's over my district and over this right here, she's like my constituents don't want to do that. I'm like. I'm your constituents, and I most definitely would love more money in my community than besides paying police officers. So now I'm getting, I was getting, so now I'm getting more involved. I'm DMing them like, bro, I, I kid you not, but anytime something wild happens in the city, I'm this quick to go DM, DM my, um, DM my folks, my, my councilman. Okay, okay. Yeah, all right, so touch on that. I know I did a podcast uh, with a guy from my hometown, um, just, just a kid from Gary podcast, and he was asking like, you know, you live in Atlanta, but how you, how, how you can you still be involved in your community? Mm -hmm. And you feel me? That's exactly. Number one reason right there, I even I send my DMs, I email people. So okay. touch on that, how important that is, or you can, as so, a, in Atlanta, how can you do that? And, and I think in Atlanta it's so special, bro, because they they, they listen. You know what I'm saying? Like it's not like I'm like the white people. I'm just like the black men and black women. And I'm from this community. Like if you want to be heard, you're gonna be heard. And I think they're good for that. And also, I kind of build my um, using my platform too. A lot of time is having a platform too. The platform that I'm big enough, so thought they might not respect it. So I don't like, I don't like necessarily like that, but that's the game people play. So I got to take care on Instagram. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? It's like, like I'd be like, hey, bro, it ain't, and 10K is small and experience yeah. thing now, but shit, it's enough to go make something shake. And so I've kind of learned that too with, with um, the Black Man Lab. So that's an all black mentorship program we have every Monday, my MCA, but you know, COVID has stopped, so it's virtual. But it was headed by Kobe Dad, Molly Davis, big time lawyer, and he's the lawyer for the, the guys from uh, Morris who got pulled out the car, your friend, oh, yeah, got pulled out the yeah. car. He's their lawyer. For sure. So I, he, he's the one who's kind of encouraged me, like, speak up, you you have a voice. And so anytime, anytime I step, anytime I do something like, bro, he's one phone call away. So, I, I, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's hard for people. I look at people like, bro, I know people in the city. You know what I'm saying? I can make, I can try to make some shape with who I know for just being, for just being me. So once you, once you learn that, bro, and you do that, bro, it's really going to work, bro. You just, what would you say just to you think, encourage other people? Who, who Man, think they don't have a voice, or you know, I feel like everybody has a voice, bro. It like you, it's either you want to use your voice or not. Like, like, I, it's people like I know who have less followers than me, bro, but that's doing way more work than I'm doing okay. in politics. That, and that's the stuff that that keeps me motivated, cause like, bro, like I can get complacent easily. But I know as a kid, it's in high school, bro, who can who can run down every single constitution, every statute, every policy, like the back of his hand and say what's wrong with. Like it's in high school. And I'm I'm four years, I'm four years and five years into college. So that's knowing that, bro, anybody can speak up, everybody has a voice. Especially even in Kip, like when I went to Kip uh, Kip Houston, a big summit out there, bro, it was a little kid, bro, I kid you not in middle school, bro, like and he, he had like he got over two hundred and fifty what was it? 2,500 2, like people that signed up for a petition in the city to get this new like um, drunk. It was something about a kid died because of drunk driver. Okay. So that man, he man, he got his petition by himself, bro. Like he literally he took his mom and went to Kroger, had everybody sign and got it, got it in the city hall or something like that. It's crazy. So it's just like that little kid ain't nobody but a little kid. It's high. Yeah. So if he can do it, bro, anybody can do it. But no matter who you are, you know. So that's my thing. What you gotta say about voting? Um. That's actually interesting too, because every time it's something, every time it's something on, um, with voting, I feel like everybody should vote. A lot of people don't like the system we're in, which I understand. A lot, a lot of times, people feel like America it wasn't built for us, and it wasn't. I agree. But I saw someone on Twitter or Instagram they were saying like, only the oppressed say don't don't vote. And I'm thinking to myself, why? Because white people are gonna vote regardless. Whether we not, they don't, if they want less taxes, they want this policing in their community, they want this part. The white folks gonna vote. So why? So why? How can you be black or even just a black, black or brown person and say don't vote to help your community? And that's another thing. Even with two people doing the census, like people don't say, yeah, I don't want to do the census. I want the government to know. It's so it's ten it, minutes. It's ten minutes. It, and that and that stuff like that helps fund our communities. So my thing is, if if you're not understanding that voting is more than just Trump and Biden, I'm talking about local government. Knowing who 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 about to take over John Lewis seat? If you don't like Keisha, you feel me? Vote her ass out. Vote her out. You know what I'm saying? Like it's not that hard. Like come on, bro. Like a lot of folks try to make something soothe, like you know, deep than what it is. So. so so touching up on all that, who has been you feel me? Some of your influences in the letter? Um, I like to say my my band director Arthur Washington, my mentor. Without him, man, I wouldn't even be here talking to you right now. We wouldn't even met because of him. Sure. That's number one. Number two, Killer Mike. Um, he's 
Like he's the, in, my, in my eyes, I see myself as being the next Killer Mike. Okay. And like, I, once I build my political voice, get my platform to be. Kid yeah, man, you know, trying, <laughs> that's what I'm trying to be. Because with Killer Mike, bro, it's like he he's he's in his values. Like a lot. Like recently, he was talking with um, Governor Kemp, and folks got mad about that. And I think to myself like. It's, he's not just going there like, you know what I'm saying, I'm West shit, I'm going to talk to Trump. And actually, no, actually he is, but see, when Kanye, when Kanye went to go talk to Trump, he got the folks out of jail. Killer Mike, Killer Mike did the same did the same thing, but for our community. Those conversations. Exactly, so Killer Mike went and go talk to uh, Governor Kemp and got this program that I'm helping push right now, set kids getting into trades, like skill-based trades. I'm talking about concrete land and plumbing, electrician, for free. So he was like, bro, I, I'm trying, what can I do to help, what, Kim, what can you do to help my black people? Kim said, here's the program, Kim, I said, I got you. And now he's been making sense. So I thought I was getting mad, like, y'all mad about him, but he's literally putting money in kids my age with my skin color's pockets. You know what I'm saying? So that's why a lot of people be so surface of but aren't seeing the truth. You know what I'm saying? So that's my, that's my, that's my dog right there. So them two, all right. Shit, damn, all right, um, you got any quotes you live by? Um, do more. <laughs> right. I would, man. I got this shit tat, my little oh, yeah. little ass tat right here, you bro. <laughs> do you more, bro. That shit on the grain, so uh, do more, I'm, man. Bro, I'm, I'm taking that to my grave, bro. Like, I'm really? telling you, it don't matter what you do, bro. If you paint, goddamn, you play tennis, you swim, croquette, whatever you, whatever you do, bro. If you want to be great, just do more. You know what I'm saying? Like, we all can do more, so just do it. Shit, man. Well, we end on that. It's been real. Yes, Appreciate sir. you, Cam, bro. Really? Drop your social shit so they can call oh, yeah. you. Uh, DJ K Cam, DJ K I D D K M. I don't know if my Instagram name gonna change by then, but <laughs> I'm gonna let you know. Just follow yeah. me on there. This is the next councilman in Atlanta. Hopefully. What district are you on? Yeah. Uh, district 11. You know, right. for sure. For sure. Gotta be the Yes, sir.